you are watching Sway, 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 Sway In the morning, in the morning, in the morning Only on Shade 45 in The home of the MC Wake up, wake up Sway in the morning, you heard? Stay tuned I have to be, I'm really excited about our next me guest too, Every time too. I see him, I, I just smile it ain't even like we hung out and, you know, broke bread heavily or anything. Or okay. We, or we call each other on the holidays or anything like that. But I think of them. All right. That's nice, though. You know? I'm going to change that. I'm going to make sure yeah, we do that. We, we can at least break, break some bread, now then, though. Right? Yeah, Every now and then, right? Yep. Got yeah. to. Uh, one of the things I appreciate about, first of all, welcome Chuck English to the show. Thank you Again and again and Thank again. Thank you very much. What I like about this guy, man, and I said it last time, he's, a, uh, he's an innovator. He's a pioneer. Uh, in my opinion, he doesn't get enough credit for ushering in a new era of thought, mm -hmm. sonically, mm -hmm. as well as visually. Uh, when he was with the Cool Kids, y'all still together and stuff, right? No, no, We're no. still together, together. we just not operate under the Cool Kids name anymore. Yeah. So what is it now? Chuck and Mike. Just Chuck and Mike, right? Yeah. Okay. It's just too much. It was just too much that came with that name. Like, yeah. We, it was a really cool thing in the beginning, but through lawsuits and like all the stuff that we like succeeded with that yeah. name just always every time we hear it we just like shit man yeah, you know? <laughs> made you cringe it's because people were really like adamant on not seeing us like, mm -hmm. happen on the business side of shit so it just became kind of a, like a negative it's just kind of negative to, to me and him like when we think about it like all the work we did we had somebody come through and swoop up all our money, like, not let us do stuff. So we were just like, nah, we're just going to let that one go. Was that to, because of the youth or an experience with the business? And y'all wasn't... Or no, it was just like, I don't know. The dude kind of, I don't want to get too much into it, but yeah. it got more personal than business. Mm -hmm. And it was like, where did that come from? And I'm not the one to, like, kind of bend, so I could have probably added more fuel to the fire. But I was smart when we came in. It was just... I think that was supposed to bring me to this point. Like, yeah. If I didn't learn all the stuff I learned, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have everybody's big brother to talk about right now. Everybody's big brother. That's the name of the new project, Heather B. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Man, that's interesting, man. Okay, well, listen, man. I, I still give you credit. You real serious in the morning. No, nah, they said no. It's just <laughs> it's real. real it's, it's real, Chuck English. It's real, man, because it people think it's, you know the game is smoke and mirrors. You know, you All you see is the end result. Most people see the end result, but they don't see the steps and the, mm -hmm. the heartache and the small victories and the, the learning lessons so it's good to hear that man because people would think you probably never had no issues oh that yeah definitely uh it definitely toughened me but it didn't sour me like i'm good. not like i'm not one of the bitter people though a lot has happened where it's like that happened to you bro you didn't flip out yeah i was like nah just to everybody i look up to they've been through way worse hell yeah. yeah yeah you know what i'm saying like i know your story yeah. yeah, like yeah. you've seen way more than I've ever seen. So it's like I came up in an era where it wasn't still in your budget to go buy some mm. other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Doing you your bucks bone. and you missing $500,000 you ain't never seen in your never life. Never even got it. I don't want them problems. Yeah, you don't want that. Yeah. You don't want those I problems. Up, yeah, I do not want those problems. I had to uh -um. send your goons up to your lawyer office. I, I had that. You had that? Oh, but, but I think a lot of people heard your sound you guys were making early on and they stole that too. Mm -hmm. I think I was being like a little naive about it too. Yeah. yeah. And down to, I would hear claps that I just used and be like, oh damn, maybe he just got the same clap. And then he'd come up and tell me, yo bro, I, I bit you. Like I straight up bit you. In the club, he'll walk up to me and be like, oh yeah, I took your drums. You're hot. Yeah. You're gonna steal from me. Yeah. I don't know how to feel about it, but I'm like, all right, well, maybe that's a big up. Maybe it's not. But yeah. in the cool kids days, I feel like, I took this this type of humble or like where it was like detrimental where it was like I would never stand up for what I did. Like I didn't even tell people I made the beats till like oh, wow. three, four, five years ago. Till three or four, five years ago? It was like I thought it was cool in the beginning that nobody knew exactly what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I was very background and it was cool until like I'm starting to get looked at as the other dude that just raps. Like yeah. who, ma who makes y'all beats? Be like, what? You don't why are you even interviewing us? Yeah. Like in a full interview, be like, oh, so who makes the cool kids beats? Uh, mm -hmm. Me. Me. <laughs> <laughs> it said that the whole time. So that was the, another reason why um, the solo trip kind of got started. Mm -hmm. Mikey, uh, 
Nobody knows this, but that was his idea. He called me and was like, bro, if you don't put out an album, mm-hmm. like, I'm on my sixth. You haven't done one yet. What you waiting for? So I was like. And he's the one to push you to do it. Yeah. I pushed, like, I was his biggest supporter on all of his solo stuff, too. It was just, like, we better friends than. A lot of people in groups never take that, like, relationship serious. Mm-hmm. So it's like you get a, a, a person in the group that never kind of, like, looks out for the other people's in their groups like what's that word for it because in a band it's like a whole bunch it's like unseen things you just take it into account that yeah. that person might feel that way about something so it was like when i used to make beats it was just like i called mikey first like yo how you feel about this mm-hmm. as friends he would be like nah i'm not feeling it not feeling it mm-hmm. not feeling it and i would never force it on him so it was like we always learn how to do the right stuff in a band that a lot of people didn't. That's interesting because I so like like yeah. the deep part. I, I'm glad I get to talk about it on the show because then it could be over after this. Yeah, we was both going through kind of like the same personal struggles, but we was there for each other. Mm-hmm. But it was like why rap? Like I don't want to rap. He was like I don't want to rap with you right now. Like I just need a friend and shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So us being so tight and coming through the 08s and the 09s and mm-hmm. the 10s and the 11s where music didn't know where it was going. It was like, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to mess up our friendship to be a group. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And a lot of people do that. Like you're in a group. Are you friends? Cause you shouldn't make music together in a group. If y'all don't really rock with each other. Like if y'all that. not really friends. Yeah. And I don't know how many groups, you know, where they don't even mess. Nobody in the group messes with each other. Like what was that? Um, I think I was watching the documentary on the Tribe Called Quest one. Yeah, where uh, Busta was. Oh, uh, leaders of the news. Yeah, they broke up on raps. Oh, yo, yo, uh, yeah, uh, they uh, broke up on, yo, on yo, TV, TV raps. raps. Yeah, and nobody knew what was happening. I think what was it? Brown walked away, or it was <sighs> like I'm no longer in the group. Yo, he said something on the mic, like yeah. like completely shading the whole group in front yeah. of right. everybody, like on. It's Dinko, uh, Charlie Brown, and Buster made up leaders of the new school. That's crazy, though. I wanted to ask you, too, since you, you you are talking about it, it could be done after this. How did you get through it all, though? Was it, like, faith? Was it, like, just having that friend? Because everyone in the industry, like you said, does go through a dark period that they're not able to talk about. Some people don't pull through it. How did you I, pull through? I think it comes from not necessarily having high expectations of where I'm supposed to be at and just knowing like as long as I get to wake up and still do it like I'll figure it out tomorrow Mm. so it's like I hear a lot of people that have they wouldn't even know they had way more than me Mm -hmm, I I can't I can't fix my mouth to complain about doing what I love every day even though you know this shit sucks sometimes you know what I'm saying like it's really probably the past three years putting convertibles and everybody's big brother together and starting my own label and all these other things that are really difficult as an independent artist i never see it as difficult because what's working like what's work i could go to i be i could go to school like i was in school mm-hmm. i could have graduated and i could be doing something i completely hated so to me it's never that hard like, people going through way worse way more. and there's artists i produce for and i'll be like dog what's your contract say yeah what yeah <laughs> homeboy did what yeah he gets twenty five percent of what oh, he ain't even he ain't even there. He wasn't. <laughs> like, he wasn't even there. He bro. wasn't there when you was shooting in the gym. Oh, what? Or those the, <laughs> Tracy. You'll find like such certain situations. Like I didn't have to go through any legal stuff as far as like sample clearing or record problems like that. Mm-hmm. So I think that was the reason why it was easier. Because if you didn't let me put my music out, that's the only problem I'm gonna have. Yeah. I'll get through the rest of it. And I always see, I always saw myself in here for the long haul. Mm-hmm. Mm. I told somebody when we first started, I was like, I'm going to be Black Rick Rubin. I'm grabbing my beard right now. Uh-huh. Yeah, I see it. It's real kind of refined, too, though, man. Brick's yeah. not, yeah, you, it's, it's kind of clean, you know. I, I just trim mine because yeah. I, I, I don't like the, I don't like the naps. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got to get past that the Django. naps. You didn't want yeah. the Django There's some that. dudes that got that, like, patch right the there. The little roaches like the little on little nap them. patches, but hair be straight. I'm yeah. one of them dudes. I got yeah. straight hair, but nappy-ass beard. So. Yeah. What about um, fashion? I thought you guys were so fashion forward early on too. Are you are you still into? Is fashion still as important? I've never saw it as a fashion thing. Like the long story short is, I grew up in Detroit, and if you wasn't fresh, you had to fight. Okay. You couldn't draw, or if you wasn't fresh, or you couldn't flip in Detroit public schools in elementary school, you had to fight. 
So my mom, who was one of them moms that had money but wouldn't get me the shit because she wasn't trying to get me or nothing. <laughs> so I always could flip what I had. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like I had everybody else have Jordans. I had Deshaun Kemp's. I had to make it work. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I wore some that was black and white zebra and come to school <laughs> like, yeah, I got the Jordans. You would never know I didn't have them. You know what right. I'm saying? Like yeah. I always learned how to finesse my fit my way. So it was never about fashion. And when we came out, that was what we got hated on for. What's fashion? Yeah, we did a show with Feral March at Highline. That was like one of our first shows. Yeah. I heard somebody yell before we came out, who is this nigga in this Adidas jacket? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> right? But Feral came out in a goddamn, uh, he had a uh, cut off jean vest and cowboy boots. I mean, I know, I know he's a very yeah, eccentric yeah. dresser, yeah, but how, how I came with a Adidas right, right. jacket. Like, not yeah, even yeah. ten years ago, everybody mm -hmm. had one of these bitches. What y'all talking about? Yeah. So it was never about fashion. I was just, I always wore what I wore, and then it caught. Cause there was a time Mikey put on some peach jeans, and I was like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> then we go to Europe, and either Europe or somewhere, we just get back from Europe, and somebody put the BBC lookbook from 08 on the table. Wow. Peach jeans, teal jeans. I'm like, dog, how, do, how did you do that? <laughs> like, like you got black kids wearing all sorts of colors and shit. Then I saw the new boys like, oh, it's lit. Yeah. You know what uh -huh, I'm saying? Like, uh -huh. But I think that was our attention. We was like, yo, y'all should do this. Not like, oh, y'all jocking my shit. I ain't mm -hmm. never said that. Because I didn't invent it. Yeah. I'm wearing the shit my dad had on when I was born. Y'all you, you, dressed like B-boys. Yo, I just got the same yeah. pair of shoes my dad had holding me straight from the hospital. Wow. wow. The same sneak, the exact same ones? Yeah, Air the Force, same. the Air Force One highs, blues, like the, from like the 82. Wow. They just came back out. Oh, okay. I thought you so meant like, you had his. No. Oh, from, oh okay. That was I, like, damn. They just came back out. I did have his for a while because yeah. I thought that shit was fresh. But like, the thing about it is never really fashion with me. Like, it's just... I don't feel right unless all my shit looks like how I'm supposed to have it on. And then people be like, yo, are you fashionable? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what jeans is which. Yeah. When dudes is like, yo, ABC's ball, P -P man. I don't know none that, about it. Yeah. I don't know none of that. I wear polo jeans and Levi's. Hmm. That's it. And, and this jacket right here, what is what is this? These are my French homies, Poison Pearls. Uh-huh. So they're like, they're like the limited edition, super fresh shit in, in Paris, but they're they're really like close friends. So I wear hmm. my friend stuff. Well, your friend, uh -huh. I wear like, I just know how to put it together, but I wouldn't say, I don't know shit about fashion. Wow, that's <laughs> ironic. We would have thought differently. Is that a Hanes t-shirt you got on there? No, it's actually a Cameron t. Oh, damn, damn. <laughs> <laughs> started on me right there, huh? Keep that. All right. Oh, Bust man. out the Superman jacket. Man, this is why I want to do Chuck English this here. I'm open up the phone lines too. 888-742-3345. The project is Everybody's Big Brother. It's now available on iTunes, right? And uh, uh, iTunes, all all the streaming services, and all the basically where you could get it digitally, mm -hmm. and then the physicals will be out at the um, probably the end of November. End of November, mm -hmm. I, I've heard it. Uh, I advise you to pick it up because a lot of folks stop me. Like I was talking to a, a person last night at a, at a club, and and she was talking about um someone that she heard here on, on our show for, I think it was King Los mm -hmm. and um, she said you you told us to go buy the album and I wouldn't have never known who he was and I went and bought the album and then I started buying all his mixtapes and stuff before the album that's why it's starting to happen a lot we yeah. was talking about what happened down at the BET Awards where from your getting the game segment Scarface yeah. picked up an artist and signed him to his label because you're getting the game segment so yeah citizens support the music you're always crying about new music is here right now on Sway in the Morning so I'm telling you now Chuck English uh, has a new album Everybody's Big Brother pick it up Do you, that. you're gonna like it here's a track from it FTW, what does that stand for? From the whipping. What does that mean? Mm. Like you had to whip up the work. Like that's, you know what I'm whip saying? It, like, whip it. Like that's just a like a slang. I was like, oh, it's whipping. Like everything that you want to work, you got to whip it up. get it into rotation. I was cooking when I wrote the rap. Yeah. So I was like, from the whipping. Because everybody's going to say, think it says fuck the world. but Yeah, that's what I, that was my first, when I first saw it. That's not my attitude. Yeah, from the whipping. What were you cooking, by the way? I, I was going through a vegetarian phase. Yeah. So I was just cutting up vegetables, trying to like season it so it tastes like meat and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it did not work. Huh? No, I had to switch my attitude about like not eating meat. You can't just go eat fake meat. You just got to not want meat for a while. 
Yeah. So I went no uh, full year, no meat. Now I just eat the shit on the weekends. Hmm. What you eat? Steak? Nah. I mean, nah. Yeah. I just steak could give, give me problems. Like red meat is just not my friend. That's like the joint. All right. Yeah. I'm a fish guy. Chuck English. Sway in the morning. Shade four five. Yeah, fish for sure. Yeah. It's sway in the morning only from Shade forty five. Hello!